This is a super quick update on my previous video how to multi-material print ASA and TPU in one part on Bumble Lab printers. Thank you all for the great feedback and for the suggested improvements in the process. We are going to print the same part as last time, but we will use PETG with TPU. According to the comments in the last video, this combination is more popular than a mix between ASA and TPU. There were also two extremely good suggestions on how the entire process could be accelerated and how to save filament. Thank you for the first class input from all of you. In this video, I will only cover the changes. If there is anything unclear, you will find the link to the previous video in the upper right corner where everything is explained in detail. Here are the two filaments that we are using today. Bumble Lab PETG Basic and Bumble Lab TPU 95A HF. As we can see, the recommended processing temperatures are again very similar. So the good news is that the bonding also works very well with this filament combination. Very quickly, again we print on Bumble Lab X1 Carbon without AMS. So we are going to change the filament manually. Then we have the two filaments and we also use the engineering build plate and the 0.4 mm nozzle again. After we have loaded our print part in the Bamboo Studio, divided it into individual parts and assigned the materials, we need to tweak our filaments a bit again. The procedure is exactly the same as last time. We set the filament in slot 5 equivalent to the filament in slot 6. Now we open the filament settings and save them immediately under a new name. In this case PETG dummy for TPU mix. Now we copy all the parameters from the original Bamboo PETG basic filament again. Don't forget, we also have to adapt the settings for filament 6 slightly because the build plate temperature is at 70 degrees Celsius this time. Now comes the first optimization step compared to the last time. Thank you again for the numerous tips. We can save ourselves the prime tower. I accidentally called this one perch tower in the last video. Thanks to the BS husbands for pointing it out. Since a NAS filament is extruded from the nozzle when changing the filament manually, this has no advantage but slows down the printing and wastes material unnecessarily. Nothing changed when slicing. Again, we add a break at the first layer where the filament should be changed. Insert the printing plate in the printer, load the PETG filament manually and we can start. Now we come to the second optimization. Thanks to Ian Denton 5618 for this great tip. I hope I pronounced it right. If the printer shows the pause pop-up, please do not press resume, just press close. I thought this option wasn't available because the button somehow has an inactive appearance. But it works wonderfully. You can now change the filament immediately using the corresponding menu item. The print head no longer moves out of the perch position and you no longer have annoying strings. That's it! At the second break we switch back to PETG and after a few minutes our damper is ready. For me the result looks great again. The bonding between the two materials also seems to be really good. Maybe I will do a few pull tests soon to see how good the connection really is. If you would be interested in this let me know in the comments. One last thing you find the project file in the comments and sorry for the bad video quality this time. It was late and there is only one light bulb hanging in my study. Okay, with this said, thank you again for the great feedback. Thanks for watching. See you next time and happy making.